Hello, I'm Claire Lishman, Director of Early Years at a very large academy in the middle of Northumberland. That's it. Normally when you're down south in London, people don't think there's much action north of sort of York, really, if you're lucky. So I always put the map on just to show that actually there is life north of York. Um, we're just north of Newcastle, about um, 20 miles north of Newcastle and about 40 miles from the Scottish border. So we're very rural, but the bit of Northumberland that I'm actually working in at the moment is um, an ex-mining community uh, in the southeast of the county. Um, we serve three communities. Ashington's the largest, which is a town. Then we have two villages, which are Newbiggin and Linemouth, which are on the outskirts. I don't know if you know the area, but we're coastal. It's quite pretty. Nobody comes on holiday up there because it's so cold, but we have beautiful beaches. So if you've got a thick coat, get up there. There's some beautiful scenery. Anyway, <clears throat> we are an academy. We are an all through academy. We have two and a half thousand learners, as we call them, and we go from birth up to age 19 because we have a special school attached to us. So it is a very large um, facility, if you like, in the, in the, middle, of the, if, in the middle of Northumberland. Um, the academy itself is made up of five primary sites and uh, each of those campuses, then the children feed in to the secondary site, which is that building in the middle. And at that site, we have the centre um, for children with uh, significant learning difficulties as well. So it's, um, it's quite an interesting place to work. Um, at each of these campuses, uh, my role is to support all of the early years. So when I went there, we had the nursery provision and we had reception. And since I've been there, we've expanded that. We've looked at opportunities of how we can meet the needs of the community to offer um, all of the entitlements that parents can access within our community here. So the Josephine Butler campus, primary campus, that's probably our largest one. That's got a two-form um, entry. So we have um, a large nursery, two large nursery classes on that site. James Knott's one of our smaller ones, just a one-form entry with a nursery. William Leach campus, that's in one of the villages, and we offer two-year-old provision there. We took over a, <coughs> a sure start building, and um, we work very, very closely with the children's centre that, that used to operate in that building, and they operate um, mother and toddler groups, and two afternoons a week they'll run sessions for parents, so we work very closely with them. So as well as offering the entitlements, we look at supporting parents and, and the work of the children's centre um, and their agenda. Uh, Thomas Buick has two-year-old provision on site, plus a one-form entry nursery. And Grace Darling is our other large one in New Bingham, which is another two-form entry. So you can see it's quite... Each of the campuses is very different, and each of the communities is quite different. So the challenge, I think, really has been meeting the needs of the parents in the community to make sure that, um, as, a, as an academy, we have our, sh our, our shared ethos and our principles about what we believe is right for early years, but that each academy is, each um, primary campus is allowed to use their knowledge of the community to reflect the needs um, for the, on, the, on the provision that they offer. So, <clears throat> um, if I just go back one, two year old provisions offered on three sites. The reason why we haven't done it on the other two sites was because um, one of them is very close to a children's centre uh, and where they have a day nursery. And we were very much about working in partnership with the day nursery. We didn't feel that if we did two-year-old provision, we were all going to be fighting over the same children. So we wanted to work alongside them. And we had a very good relationship with them. I used to work for the local authority. My role had been to work with PVI settings and schools. And I was able to take that relationship with a lot of the settings in our area that we built up and, um, and grow it, if you like. So we saw that setting up in competition was not the way we wanted to go on that campus. So our two-year-old provision, or our children, go to the Children's Centre Day Nursery for their two-year-old provision. I'll come back to that campus because it's slightly different for offering the 30 hours. Uh, one of the other campuses, we didn't open two-year-old provision because um, 
financially it wasn't going to be viable, we didn't have the take up. That, that is one of our campuses that is on the edge and the outskirts of the town and um, there's a new development there, new housing. So a lot of the families were actually working, so there wasn't the need um, for the children there to take up the two-year-old entitlement. So there isn't two-year-old provision on that site. And the other three sites we've set up a uh, two-year-old provision on there. Okay, so we just got the two-year-olds cracked when the 30 hours came along. So that was our next challenge. Um, <clears throat> as I said before, each catchment area is different. The needs of each community is different. So we had to look at them as five separate schools. Although we're under one umbrella, it was looking at the needs of each community. So the first thing was, was there a need actually? You know, we are in an area where there's quite high unemployment. Hence, we have a lot of two-year-olds accessing our two-year-old provision. And I was really quite surprised um, that the need was there for the 30 hours. Uh, we were part of, um, Northumberland was part of the um, early implementers, but there was certain criteria and Northumberland was selected as for the rurality, wasn't it? I'm looking at Joe here. So being in the busiest part of Northumberland, I didn't think we would fit the criteria for being um, the, the rural isolation bit. It turned out that one of the criteria was the distance from a main post office and our two um, villages, if you like, didn't have a main post office. The main post office was in Ashington. So we actually did have some eligible children, which was, was quite a surprise. But that gave us sort of the opportunity to start exploring how we were going to meet the needs of all of the parents that were entitled to the 30 hours. Uh, so we did a feasibility study. Um, there's an example of the one that we used is actually in the toolkit. Um, again, it's kind of hounding parents to return things, isn't it? You can send lots of information out to parents, but you, you know, there's, you're always chasing them up, aren't you, to get things back. We've just done a parent questionnaire, and we kind of had to lock the doors before we could to get, make sure that we got them back <laughs> from the parents. Um, So we, we did a feasibility study and found out that actually in one of our campuses there was enough children um, eligible for 30 hours that we could set something up within the school. I'll come back to that because that was one of our models. Um, in another campus um, there were a handful of parents, there were about four or five, which didn't mean that it was... Um, viable for us to run something for the 30 hours. Our nurseries operate either five mornings or five afternoons and they're full. So it wasn't a question of just keeping the 30 hours children for a longer period of time. We didn't have the capacity to do that so we had to look at another way of doing it. So that was where our childminders came into the picture and I'll talk about our childminder agency in a moment. Uh, and the third setting the third campus where we had quite a big uptake was the campus that works that we work very closely with the um, children's centre next door and they their day nursery were very happy to work with us in partnership to offer the additional 15 hours so on each of the sites we have quite different models operating <clears throat> so the three ticks are where we've got we had a good response for the 30 hours uh, this campus here, Thomas Buick, we didn't have a single parent who was eligible for it. Um, so that was one at the moment that we review that termly to see if there is going to be any uptake and we'll probably work with childminders to meet the needs of those families in that community. So the next thing we did, we'd done the feasibility, we found out how many parents were eligible. We then looked at, um, we knew that we couldn't do it ourselves so we were going to have to work with other providers so it was about researching the other providers in in the, in the catchment areas um, again because i'd worked in my previous role i knew a lot of the other providers and we'd already got quite good links with them so this wasn't quite uh, as daunting a task as it might be if you if you have been working in isolation and you haven't got those relationships built but for us it was about quality um, Sue always laughs when I do presentations because I live on a farm and there always has to be some kind of agricultural hint in there. So today's little hint is about um, caged hens' eggs and uh, free-range eggs. And to me, that's quality. Every setting that you go into 
has certain elements that have to be provided. Your workforce has got to be there, your environment's got to be there and other things. But actually for me, the difference is the quality of that workforce that makes a difference, the quality of the environments. So that's, for me, is what we look at. You can look at Ofsted inspections and that gives you a good idea, but actually it's getting in there and getting to know what do they believe in? Do they believe in the same sort of thing as you do? So that was quite a big thing for us, was doing, doing the sort of the research about do we think these people will, will be able to work with us? Want to work with us, actually. <laughs> um, the next thing was to, when you had agreed that you were going to form a partnership with um, another provider, was uh, to do it in kind of a business-like way. It's very easy to say, yeah, we'll work together, it'll be great. But actually, we felt that from the beginning, we had to get the, the parameters, if you like, outlined so everybody knew where they were. Because you know what it's like, you know, you can be, things can start off really well, but then suddenly something comes up that can totally rock the boat. So we decided that from the beginning, we had to all agree the non-negotiables for all of the partners. We had to have the same ethos. It was no use the children coming to us and experiencing the sort of things that we believed in was good early years practice and then going to another partner and having a different, totally different kind of provision. We wanted to make sure that there was that continuity and that consistency of care for the children, no matter where they were. Um, we had an action plan because there was quite a lot of things to discuss and it was more than a two hour meeting so we've got our priorities listed of what we thought we needed to deal with. Uh, there's an example of the action plan in the toolkit as well. Um, and I think that the biggest thing is the third bullet point on there. We drew up an agreement. We have got a written partnership agreement that everybody has signed. Um, it sounds very formal, but I think further down the road, if there is anything, you can always refer back to your partnership agreement and say, we've had these discussions, we agreed this sort of thing. So actually, it sounds quite formal and it sounds quite businesslike. And I know in early years, quite often we rely on our good nature and all of this sort of thing. But I do think it's really important to have a partnership agreement in place. Again, there's a model one in the toolkit that um, it's very general, but it's there. Um, <clears throat> the information sharing policy is also something that I think is very important. Uh, we're all very used to being very careful about who we share information with and what information we share. So that was, there was quite a lot of discussions that went on about that. Our parents also signed something to say that they agree for the partners to share information between themselves. We also have sort of like a daily information type um, sh sharing sheets so you know if a child's if a mum said something when they've dropped a child off somewhere and then they come to another setting we make sure that something is written down so that that information does go between um, settings and that's quite important uh, for the mum as much as anything knowing that their children are going to be you know that message is followed through sort of thing and we also wanted to have a logo to show that there wasn't anybody in charge of this it was all of us working together in partnership. So we've got our, our logo that shows that all of the partners within the, the partnership are equal partners. And we do make sure that we put the next diary date in and we meet together. And that's been really useful. We've just had our first meeting for this term, um, which has been quite interesting because it's been the first sort of meeting we've had since the 30 hours has officially uh, been rolled out. So, constructing our models. These are some of our little ones at school. Um, we've talked about the school-based model. This is in our biggest campus. So, uh, the second model is working with us, uh, the Childminder Agency. We set up a Childminder Agency about two years, two years ago now, was it? The reason we did this wasn't because there weren't childminders in the area, there were, uh, and there were very good childminders in the area and a lot of them were quite full. We did this because at one stage we were looking at offering provision from naught um, right through to 19. We took the children in at two but we looked to see whether there was any um, market for us to take them from birth sort of thing. There wasn't the need because we've got a lot of good day nurseries in the area. 
But what we did want to do was for those parents who did want to be associated with the academy right from the start was to establish our own childminder agency where we, we only have five childminders registered. Um, but they play a really important part in how we meet the entitlements for our parents and our communities. Um, two of our childminders pick up from um, one of the, the nurseries and they offer either before or after um, care for, for the two-year-olds that are going to there and also in, for the three-year-olds. What we've also found using these childminders, which was really, really useful, uh, and helpful for our parents was that some of our two-year-olds weren't quite ready to come into a setting the term after their second birthday. So they stayed with the childminder or they went to the childminder and accessed some of their provision there. And then as they became a more able to cope going into that sort of setting, we, we got them more involved with that and the childminders worked very flexibly with us to make sure that the children's needs were met. And gradually the children Took, took up their full place in the two-year-old entitlement. Um, so at one of our campuses, our two childminders uh, pick up the, th the other 15 hours for the 30 hours children. Being part of our school uh, means that they get um, a lot of benefits of what the early years team have. Uh, they can attend any of our CPD, they come and they just share good practice, they come in when they've got time, they come into the nurseries. So it works very closely. We see them as part of our early years team, which I think has helped. <clears throat> and those are just some of the benefits really for the 30 hours and working with the Childminder Agency for us. This is a bit of a success story really. Sue mentioned that some of our parents became childminders. These two ladies have been born and brought up in the community where they're, they're working now. Um, and they accessed a, a level three childcare course with our support. Uh, we, we worked with our local college to um, develop a course that supported them in becoming childminders and then going on to do their level three. I asked them if they wanted to advertise on the Families Information Service website so that they could extend their business a little bit, but they both said no. They said the purpose of them becoming childminders was to support their own community. So they, they've, they're terribly proud that they now run their own business and probably this is something that they would never have had the opportunity to do and they feel they're serving their community, which is what they wanted to do as well. So it's been a real success story for the two of them. <clears throat> the, th the school where we have the, um, the, the, probably the real partnership working with the three providers is, um, our, this is our logo here, Grace Darling. Rascals Childcare is the day nursery that's in the children's centre that we work closely with. And then two of our other child minders are hate and family childcare. So parents can then use whichever of the facilities they want to. The children come to us for 15 hours and then they, the parents access either the day nursery if they want to or hate and family childcare. <clears throat> That's what that is, Grace. I think we were talking about planning as well before. What we do, although we don't take a lead on it, what we do is our nursery teacher provides the other partners with her medium term planning. So it's got all the learning objectives on, but it's up to them how they address it with their activities, what they do. So we've got continuity there because the learning objectives are being met in all of the, with all of the partners, but the flexibility there is there um, for, for partners to deliver the activities that they want to to help address those learning outcomes. We also have shared documentation um, and we're looking at how we can do trackers across all, all of the three providers. What's made it work for us is communication, absolutely vital. Have that relationship with your parents, with the staff in your school, because it's all very well, head teachers and things deciding that this is going to be a good thing, but actually you know, get, keep your staff involved with it, make them feel part of it. They're the ones that are really key to it being successful. So lots of talk, lots of open relationships, lots of open discussions about how it can work best for the children. Benefits for school for us. 
we have been able to offer all of the entitlements. Um, we haven't had to alter our core business, if you like, because we are a school um, and we have got restraints really in quite a lot of what we can provide because of the nature of the sites we're on, the staffing we've got, this sort of thing. So it, working in partnership has been absolute, you know, crucial for us to be able to offer the entitlements that we want to. Parents enjoy the flexibility. Parents feel um, confident that actually their children are getting a good deal. And I think the mutual respect is, is also crucial. So what have we got coming up? Well, regular meetings with our partners, make sure that if there are any little bumps in the road, we can iron them out straight away. Um, new foundation stage unit at one of our campuses, James Knott, that's one where the children are just, we're going to develop a foundation stage unit so those children who are eligible for the 30 hours will just continue within um, that school all the time. We'll review the demand because parent circumstances change so we know term by term that we might have to look at what can we offer at the campus where we haven't got anything at the moment and also we're going to ask parents make sure it's worked for them and I think that's it